What about y'all really know what it is? Your boy Yako, what it do? The outlet to reality, the holders podcast in Vegas and Chicago. What up? This is the place where you want to hide from your drama or maybe hide from your baby mama. Aha, just kidding. Easy to get a cambia to vida. If you want to change your life, then subscribe. Cha-ching. By the way, guys, I just published my first book called Shabbat in Chicago. It's about an audacious single mom who opens her heart and home to five adopted kids while embracing her Latino culture while being Jewish. And today we have a very, very special guest. I had to bring her in the building. <laughs> Give it up for the one and only Lisette. Woo! What's up, everybody? Hey, thank you for having me. Of course, girl. I was I was nervous. <laughs> oh my gosh, why? Man, because you don't understand. It's an honor to to have a superstar. You know what I'm saying? Oh, stop. Well, I'm happy that you think of me like that. I appreciate it so much. <laughs> you see, you see. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we got the baseball jersey. What? Hey, what? what's up? What's up? <laughs> Baseball season, my favorite. <laughs> too good. That's like my style. When I go out, I, I got to have my jerseys. Me too. You, well, I guess we didn't spend that much time last summer together because I was always just in my, in my jerseys and some oh, shorts. For real? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you have like uh, our mutual friend, Allie. Like she dresses up and I'm like, this is me. <laughs> so let me tell you something so chicago we actually are known to wear jerseys all the time oh yeah yeah nice. so when we go out even at los santos the nightclub we're still wearing jerseys oh then i should move to chicago <laughs> yeah i think so i think your your past life you were from chicago <laughs> yes you know i'll get there i'll get there one day yeah, yeah, I'll let you know. <laughs> but look, if I you wonder... got the ticket, I'll go. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> yes, yes, yes. But look, I want to let our fans know how we first met, right? So, for those who don't know, um, I got invited to a Friendsgiving, uh, and our mutual friend is Ali from the grand finale. Great person, awesome, great energy. And the crazy thing is I get there early, right? I pull up. I pull up in the new Bugatti. No, just kidding. I pulled up. I really pulled up. And I see this person right here, right? She got black hair. She's taller than me for sure. Got gray pants and a black shirt. Or black hoodie. She got a black hoodie. I remember now. No, I didn't have no. I have a gray hoodie. It was a, a gray, gray hoodie. hoodie. My bad, my bad. Okay, okay, okay. Don't She's make right you making there. me out to be all this. All posted by the door, you know, and I, I'm excited. And I said, you know, I'm, I'm here for uh, for Ali. Okay, take off your shoes. I'm like, damn, girl, what you need? What you need? I got no weapons. I got nothing. You know, I got Valentina. That's it. And the first, I'm not like the first impression. I thought Ali really got security guards. I'm like, I know she's doing acting, but I didn't think she had to hire them on the spot. <laughs> You did come in, you're like, uh, uh, is, is this Ali's house? Like, you, <laughs> like, is Ali there? I'm like, yeah. Uh, can you take off your shoes off? <laughs> I was just following the rules. She just told me, like, yeah, get the door. Let them know they take off the shoes. I, I, I'm just following the rules. That's it. Oh, man. I, I got to be honest. I was sweating. I was like, dang, this, this, is a, this is a good one. This is probably the top head security. <laughs> I'm not joking. So I get Top security of the world, Chris. Right. <laughs> I was like, damn, we got money like that. You know what I'm saying? Nah. <laughs> and so I get to the dinner. We're all eating. And I told everybody, I said, like, yo, I got to tell you this. But when I first met on set, <laughs> I was like, yo, I didn't know Ali needed a security guard. Everybody at the <laughs> table started laughing. They're like, David, you stupid. And then <laughs> we then this is the time I get to actually know the set. Like from you know, person to person. You know, she's sitting across from me and I start hitting some some words. I was like, you know, the set, um, that's so cool that 
your son, you know, has autism because I used to work with with students with autism at the high school I used to teach at. And that yeah, was the true. moment I was like, yo, we have more in common, me and the set, than probably most of the people at this room. I'm not going to lie. But that yeah. was the thing that really um, I felt like a magnet gravitate us to come closer. What about I, you? I agree, yeah. Yeah, no, I respect uh, anybody that says that they work with kids with special needs. It's always been, like, so dear to my heart. So just knowing that information from you, I'm like, then you know, you know how it is with with special needs or autistic kids. It's a, another world, but I honestly, it's a blessing, too. It's a blessing to know that world. And because of my son, I, I, I feel like it's such a blessing. So it was really cool. Um, <laughs> you made me like, don't believe him. I was cool. I just have the serious face, though. You know, people just think I'm odd. You know, I'm that person because you know this is me happy. Like usually, my face is just one. When, when I'm happy, sad, it's usually the same face. That's just how it goes. Right. <laughs> I was born with that serious face, but I use it. I use it now. Uh, growing up, I always used to, you know, get it all the time. And then I started realizing, hey, well, that's my niche now. You know, I should go for these roles in acting, you know. Now it's like my my moneymaker. <laughs> wow. It's amazing. It's amazing, girl. And please, please, if you could tell us, like, when you, your first impression of me or your favorite memory that you have with us. Uh, Cause I, I we, we've hung out a few times, so if if you could you know share the beans, maybe not the cheese, you know I, I mean oh, a lot. No. Well, when we went to um, the eccentric artist uh, open mic, or was it like a poetry mic? I don't know what they call it. Yeah. Oh, my dog's in there. I didn't even oh wow! <laughs> Girl, can't take my shine away. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> No, I think when we went to the eccentric artist and you had your box of books and you were just hustling, like that was way, that was so cool to see that because, you know, it's hard as a, you, as artists, we're our own small business. You know, we have to be our, the manager, the, you know, the merchandise manager, we're all out there selling ourselves, you know? So that was really cool to see that you were out there, you were grinding, you were hustling, you, and then you were signing every book, you know, that was really cool. Get anybody who paid, you made a personal note for them. And that was really, that was really good. I felt really, like I respected you for that. And I think that was like the, the, the moment that I was like, yeah, he's cool because, you know, he's in it for the right reasons. That right. was really cool. So look, girl, this is, this is really crazy. So, when I did that book event, right, I was there. You were, you're right at the poetry event, my bad. Mm -hmm. And I had my books. The funniest thing is that Angel <sighs> kept saying, brother, you look like a drug dealer selling your books. <laughs> Say that's what he told me with a box of books. No. And, and I started laughing. I said, bro, why you got to be mean? But yeah. <laughs> He's good for that. I'm like, why do you always gotta say something? He was making fun of my jacket. Remember, I was all about my new jacket, my Van Gogh jacket. I was yeah. like, every time I take a picture, I was like, making sure you can see my jacket. The jacket had like Van Gogh paintings on it. It was special, all right. Like, I love my Van Gogh. So he was always laughing at that. He posted something and was like, his everybody check out her new jacket. <laughs> <laughs> why are you always clowning, man? No, you have to like. Well, how how else are you gonna carry the books? Right. Like how, how else are you gonna carry? You have you need a you need a boss. Ain't nobody working with you. Right. You're your own carrier. That's not it. like you had a that you're a, like a a little younger version of you just <laughs> holding everything. <laughs> nah, man, it was cool. It was really good to see that. I respect that because, and also you know it's really great that you made a book. Not everybody can say they they wrote a book and they finished it. So. Should be be proud of yourself. Give you a lot of credit for that. Thank you. Thank you. It takes you. a lot of work. I can only imagine how much work it takes to do that. Yeah. So why it, not? I even I was like, at the end, like when it was like the close of the night, wasn't I? Uh, and you only had a couple left, and I think I saved it for the night. And I was like, "Hey, man!" And I give you the the money. I was like, "Hey, let me get a book too." And then your the way you looked up at me, like really, I was like. Oh, that's what I wanted. 
you your eyes are like tinkling like a little like a little tell me okay like you know but my book it feels so good i love making people happy like that that you know what that memory was so beautiful because i uh honestly for everyone else that bought my book i actually kept it short like thank you uh for you know uh seeing me talk uh, i hope this book you enjoy it it was real short maybe like two yeah. words or ten words and i signed it but when you said that you wanted my book i was uh, i'm gonna actually put my heart into this i'm actually gonna write something very beautiful yeah and i was like i'm so proud of you for the woman you become for being an awesome mom for always being there for your child i had to add that because a lot of these mamas, we got to give them credit, you know, they're they're the heroes, you know, and I feel like we need to to show that. And so, look, I, I got to I got to say this, right. You know, you were in this big film. Uh, I just finished watching it and it's amazing. <laughs> thriller drama, it, it won a, a thriller award for a film festival. No, no, no. That's that's a different one. Oh, it's different. One. My back, my back, my back. I'm excited. I'm mixing up the two. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're yeah, mixing up two films because that was last week. That okay, last week, like my bad. It has, it has won some awards, actually. I think it has won a thriller for. Actually, now that you say that, but it's not the festival you're thinking about. Okay, okay. My bad, my bad. I got excited. I got excited. <laughs> See, I'm already sweating. Estoy sudando. You know. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> But look, I got to say, this movie, uh -huh. you know, I sat down, got my nachos and Cheetos, and I was <laughs> enjoying this movie with my little syrupy. But I got to say, the movie, the way it was filmed, so smooth, very high quality, HD, and I saw you. And I'm like, dang, she's working at a restaurant. And I see in the beginning scene, the owner or the manager was already on your case, like giving you a hard time. And you in your head, you're like, I got to get, I got to work, right? We don't really know your backstory yet. But the part that I wasn't expecting was for your sister to come in. And you told your coworker, hey, I'm going to close up. I'll wash the dishes. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, who is this person? Is this person like uh, mm -hmm. uh, a stalker or someone you've been trying to hide from? I don't know. There's a lot of things going in my head. But we find out it's your sister. Mm -hmm. And one of the most powerful dialogues throughout the whole movie was you sitting down and she's standing up and telling you something so personal uh, of her being abused, right? Right, right. And and it was a very tough conversation. And you being the big sister was disappointed that she didn't tell you earlier. Right. And but the scene that really got me too, that was very powerful without any words, was the teardrop that fell down. Oh, because I mean, it, I was feeling all the feels. I was really in that character. I, I'm so big on transforming and into the character. And as she was, even though you, you rehearse and you go through the dialogue, I, 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 I couldn't, I had to let it go I, in the moment. It was just what I felt like I was right there listening to my little sister. Give me this news of stuff that I should have known about for a while. And it just hurt knowing that I could have done something about it. And then she went through, it was like 18 years or something. That she, or like, you know, or I forget how long I was in jail for. Because my character's in jail. So it's not like I could have done that. Oh, for 10 years. I think it was like 10 years that um, I, that was happening when I was in prison. Wow. So, yeah. And, and tell okay. us, please, tell us how you got that role you being able to co-write it please tell us like like okay. the backstory how this happened um well hasani mustafa the director he pitched me the idea he said look this is a true story that happened to my little sister 
but I think we could turn it around to, you know, fit you. Because eh, his little sister went to a group of older cousins a long time ago. And then he was so young that he couldn't also do something about it. So he said, you know what? If This is my love letter to my sister. If this were to happen now, this is something I would have done. And when he told me that, you know, I said, I want, I want to try to do this. You know, I want to invest in it. I executive produce. I help him co-write it also because he wanted to make it Spanish. And so that we can hit Latin film festivals as much as possible. So we put a little Spanish in there. We, you know, turn around the, the, the story a little bit to fit that kind of Latin um, genre, as you, as you, as you say, I don't know, but yeah, I think I think that's how I got it, and that was actually my first lead role, so that was really big for me. Um, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Uh, but it was really cool, um, and then I just love transforming into characters. Anything that's you know not me, and I do end up playing a lot of those hard characters because uh, that's my face. Like you know it, you know it firsthand. So. <laughs> It just comes naturally, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Now that's amazing. And please tell us, like, I thought this was really cool that you shared to me about how you had an opportunity to um, actually act in L.A., right, for a, a movie project wow. and then um, got to work with a legend, someone that you admire. Can you share that, like, that experience? Oh, that, um, I think you're talking about two different films, but, um, well, one of the, the, the first gig I had in LA ever was for a feature film. And I got that role because the director saw Hermanita. That's just the short film that we were just talking about. He just saw it and said, you know what? I have a role that you would be perfect for. If you want to read the script and let me know, cause it, you know, it's another one that had like a, really hard issue um, or topic in it and not everybody will want to do it but um, him just getting the role based off of you just watching my film that's a that's one of my goals right there you know that was my goal for making the short film hermanita in hopes that like somebody were to see it and be like oh that girl she she could do this part hopefully you know um and that film is called those who inherit the earth that's the one that won the the best thriller feature last last week for the film festival here in vegas uh and <clears throat> then the other one that i got to work with somebody who i've admired for a while is sessions that's a short film that i just did uh, the shooting for last weekend and it was just so cool i mean that was one of the best experiences i've ever had as an actress because, you know, it, it was just an organized shoot. Um, there were so many great people that were on it. But the Gigi um, Gazzaldo, I might be pronouncing your last name ro wrong. But I worked with her before, but not acting. Not like we're working together acting. And I was just like nervous too, you know, like, oh, my God, I've got to put my, my nerd, my nurse side away and be like, I'll talk to her later. But afterwards I was like, this was my first time working with you. And I just felt so honored. And it was just so amazing to, it, I, I actually was on a cloud, a cloud nine and on a high all week since then, because it felt so good shooting with her and, and with, you know, being on that film, it was an honor. Yeah. And I'm excited for that one. That's amazing. She's, she's, she's like a, she does a lot of theater, but gosh, she's a she's a powerhouse herself. Like, and then it's just so cool. She's a she's older, and then just seeing that, I'm like, oh my god, that's just so cool. Wow, I love I love seeing people like that. And then she does um other films too, but yeah, I I always wanted to work with her, but I feel like am I able to work with somebody in this capacity? You know, somebody at that level, and it was really cool. I think she even she even posted about it too. Like she was excited to work with me too, and I'm like, <laughs> me, oh my gosh, I was so excited. Wow, that's so cool. And did you guys get to talk a little bit backstage? 
Um, yeah, after the shoe is when I, I went up to her because I was like, I didn't want to break. You never know, like, how an after's, you know, work goes. Like, I, I don't want to, like, break any moment or, like, her um, not ethic or, you know, whatever they go through. Like, even me, like, I had to play a different character that, you know, I don't want to break anything by us talking and chit-chatting. So I'll wait till the end of the shoot and then I just kind of nerded out and I, I took a picture. I was like, I need to document this. So I took a picture with her at the end of it. Um, you know, stuff like that. I felt like a little girl. I'm like, ah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm working with somebody. Somebody big. Oh my gosh. Oh man. That's so cute. That's so cute. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I think that it's true. A lot of us need to, um, you know, continue following our dreams and and not give up. You know, um, and and for you, like it's amazing for all the things you've accomplished, right? Within a year, even last year. Mm -hmm. And if you could share too, like, what got you into acting, right? Was you know, did you start it when you were young? Uh, who was your inspirations? Um, we would love to, you know, hear your side. Oh, I always wanted to be an actress. That was my dream since I was little. Since I can remember, it was the only thing I could think, like, dream of. Is like one day I want to be an actress. You know, I want to grow up and make these movies, and and that's what I want to do as a job. You know, and um, I, I did take acting classes when I was younger, but my, I feel like my parents didn't know the resources on how to get me. You know acting jobs or where to submit myself to so it wasn't until I was I was older actually when I became a mom and um, I, I realized if I'm not pushing my dream then how is my son gonna follow his dream how are my kids gonna follow their dreams and so I really pushed myself when I became a mom I said you know what I gotta do it now now's the time now is when I have to do it and he and they do they see me go to work and they see me doing what you know I love and I talk about it with them I'm like this is what I love this is what I want to do and I hope that that helps them uh like they motivate me and hopefully I'm motivating them as well so yeah I, I always had that dream and I think um uh, now being older I, I know where to search for you know the the, the jobs I, I'm getting a little bit better it does you know take some time to figure out where you can submit to or stuff like that um so i'm just i'm just not giving up that's just the whole thing is like i'm gonna keep going whether it take years or whatever and who who really cares like how long it takes as long as you're just not giving up on your dream whatever it is just keep it going oh man <laughs> But see, girl, well, look, one of my last questions I want to ask you, right? I, I want you, if you could give an advice to your old self, right? Your younger self, if you were to go back in time and share the things you wish you could have known, what would it be? Mm, that's really hard to think because um, I don't know, because I feel like Growing up, yeah, you you think of the what ifs, and you're thinking like, what if I would have known this? Would it, it, it led me here or whatever? But honestly, I I don't know what I would tell myself. I guess to to that everybody's on the same page. You know, you really get in. I get in my head, and I would put myself down. And I feel that now I notice that everybody's on the same page everybody is kind of like faking it till they make it kind of thing you know everybody is thinking about that even if they're not showing it they might have their own inner thoughts but they're just way better at hiding it and i feel that you know if that's probably the only thing i probably would have told myself like stay stay confident even though if you're not confident pretend <laughs> you know keep it going and put yourself out there so yeah i think that would be the only thing but, you know, I do, I, I like, you know, going through my experiences, I think that makes you who you are. It, just, it makes me true to who I am. Ooh. Yeah, so, I don't know. I'll be like, just keep it, conf keep it confident, I guess. <laughs>
I love it. I love it. That was deep. That was deep, girl. I got mm. the chills. <laughs> I, got the chills. I, I yeah. think that's true. Like even in life, right? Um, if you're in a relationship or you're first dating, and you're you're the guy, you know, gotta have confidence to make the first move. You know, he can't be mm -hmm. like, I'm gonna wait next year. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, like, I'll, yeah. I'll wait. I'll wait for her to make the first move. You you can't. You gotta be the person to to show that. I got you, babe, you know, um, even like, you know, when you with your your family, when you got to protect them, you got to have the confidence to make sure they're they're safe, too. You know, so I'm with right. you, with you 100 percent. I think that uh, we're just some of us, we're just a little shy. But if we believe in ourselves, we can do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm I'm pretty shy. Like and I like being a homebody. I like, the, you know. <laughs> I like the, I like to stay inside, but I, that was one thing I had to push myself was going to the mixers and networking. That was not my area at all. And now little by little, the more practice you do now, it's like, I could, I got this. I can figure this out, you know? And I think that's, that's always a good thing to do is just keep practicing and not giving up on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, love it. I love it, girl. Well, look, girl, I'm happy you're on the okay. show. Guys, this is the Outlet to Reality, the oldest podcast in Vegas and Chicago every Tuesday. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Cha-ching! Y'all know where to find me. I'm on Instagram, YouTube, Spotify, the Outlet to Reality. My Snapchat's Take One Pass It. And Lisette, where can my fans find you? I'm on Instagram at Lizette double underscore hunter. Follow! Yeah. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. Hey. <laughs>